I heard y'all talking about it. Why didn't you get rid of assembly? Or did you? Were you talking about assembly? I think I might have blurted it out. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you not want to get rid of the right to assemble? Well, like this is an assembly, isn't it? Okay, yeah, but this is government imposed okay. being here. So, well, I mean, not colleges, but high school would be. Because what? if we would, like, put on our own, if they want us to, like, not be able to fight back and just be on our own, one person's not as strong as, like, a whole group of people. Okay. So you need a whole group of people to fight the government. All right. Okay. What else? Why, why else wouldn't you get rid of it? Would a church be assembly? Yes. <laughs> yes. And that's really the fun one, okay? Is they won't get rid of religion, but they'll get rid of assembly. And that's, a, that's a lot of fun to play with that one. So you can be a church of one. You know, you can believe anything you want to. You've got to do it in your own house by yourself. Uh, so, and a lot of times they get rid of the right to petition. That's another one that gets uh, thrown out every once in a while. Uh, and it, and it uh, you know, sometimes it does good with politicians, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you know, the Democrats and Republicans are doing their favorite little, uh, uh, I heard it called something, the Potomac two-step one time. Uh, up there, the, the Republicans are now trying to put in the bill with the health insurance um, that it has to, they have to, before they can vote on it, it has to be online for 72 hours. Okay? Anything wrong with that? So that all of us can look at it and then tell our representatives what we think. Anything wrong with that? Yeah, unless it's like during a holiday. <laughs> what if you don't have a computer? Huh? Or if you well, you go over to your buddy. And are they going to tell you that it's online? Like, are they going to let you know? Yeah. Do? Democrats said, no, we're not going to do that. Why? What are they hiding? Well, I'll, t I'll tell you what, a couple of things. Number one, they don't want the pressure of people saying, I don't like this, I don't like that. Uh, but on the flip side, think of all the news media that's going to attack that thing. You know, they're going to find one paragraph in it and attack it. Okay, and I'm not, well, you know, hopefully you don't know if I'm a Republican or a Democrat at this point in time, and hopefully you'll never figure that out. But, uh, <laughs> but do you see what they're doing? And if you didn't have the press and looking at it, right now, if we didn't have the press, we wouldn't know what was in that bill. Mm -hmm. and, and look at and look at what we have today in terms of the internet. Okay, if we didn't have the press, we didn't even know what was in the bill, even close. Um, so, all right. Uh, now, any questions about what we talked about so far? All right. What would you take out if you had to? Yeah. Well, well, well I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm not, here's, the, here's the bottom line. I'm not sure you would want to take out any of them. This is yeah. a well thought out, well planned set of rights. And all of them are important. And to tell you the truth, the only one that I would say that you could take out and you could, you could live with would be indictment by grand jury. Okay? Let the state attorney charge first degree murder. You still have a regular jury, an impartial regular jury who tries the case. Okay? So you could you could maybe get rid of that one, uh, but after you get rid of more than one, that's why I make you get rid of three. The whole thing falls apart. There there really is no way to get rid of three of those and not create a nightmare. Yes. What do you think about like O.J. Simpson though? He like got double jeopardy and he was like found innocent and pretty much came out and said that he killed his wife. <laughs> Oh, well, you, about it. You, yeah. want, you want to know what I, you know what I think about that? The prosecutors were terrible. Yeah. They were awful. So That's what I think about. Should it. Happen in the first place. I think the prosecutors did a terrible job. Yeah. Okay. I, that, that's my, that's my feeling of it. I can tell you that. They tried that case for months. It's the longest murder case I've ever tried is two weeks long. You know, I, the, you know, the judge messed up by not making the lawyers follow the rules, the prosecutor messed up by trying to make the case into a big deal. Uh, you know, they let, the, they let the news media affect how they tried that case. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, it was just, the, the whole thing was just, it was, it was just made for TV, and that's really not what court is all about. Yeah. And I have tried cases in front of TV, in, in front of TV cameras. I've tried two or three cases uh, where court TV came down and filmed the whole trial. 
One of them they still continue to show on American Justice. Um, but those are not, but there wasn't the hype outside of the courtroom that there was in that. And there was a lot of pressure. And both sides played to the camera instead of doing their job. They were worried about what kind of money they were going to make when the case was over as opposed to doing their job. And, um, you know, both sides, I think, um, got too tangled up in that instead of doing their job. That's what they should be. Hmm? <laughs> well, well you, you got an argument there, but I would disagree with you. Because people people have a right to know what's going on in court. They just do. And uh, and it's it's important, trust me. If you were if you were on trial, if you were on trial for something you didn't do, you would want that trial to be in public. I don't think it would be like I don't think it should be like broadcasted like other and that's other people's business. Who cares? Well, it, it, and I, I can't say you're wrong about that. I'm just saying a place like Court TV, of course, I don't even know if there is anything like Court TV anymore, but they'd come in with a very small camera and they'd just film the whole trial. And then they would show the whole trial in a lot of, in a lot of aspects. So, so the public got the chance to draw their own conclusions about trials. That's why it was first set up that way. So, you know, but TV is required now to cut it down and cut it down and cut it down. So... Uh, the two-week trial that I tried, that, that I was telling you about, that's on TV, is now shown in an hour. <laughs> Everything about the case. So, but, but really, the bottom line of this whole thing is that it, was, it was very thought out. It was very well planned. These, these men were very well-read men. This stuff that they, that they were putting in here went as far back as Rome and Greece mm -hmm. and, and, and the rights that, that were in there. Okay, finally. Who needs first one to raise her hand gets to do this? Okay, you're it. He gets point. Okay. All right. Come, come, and I'll tell you what, come right over. I thought you were just giving me a point. No, 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 you stand right there. All right, next one to raise her hand. Yes. Yeah, him <laughs> That's your lawyer. Sweet. <laughs> Are you my judge? What's your last name? Loveland. Loveland? Yes. Loveland. Okay. I'll pay you well if you get me this. All right, now. <laughs> That's work. You have to put it in. You got it. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. No, you're going to plead more. Just plead him guilty. All right, now, what I'm going to show you is Mr. Loveland charged with DUI. Okay? Right? This is a first time DUI. Okay? And this is what happens on a on the minimum. The minimum. He's going to get the minimum for a first DUI. Okay? He's got no prior record. It's his first DUI. And I want you to listen to exactly what I do in court. Because when you hear it, you'll go, yeah, I think he said that one or two times before. Okay? All right, Mr. Compton, your client, come on, come on up. We've got to get you on video here, buddy. All right. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up, come on up, come on up. Mr. Compton, uh, your client, Mr. Loveland, is charged with uh, DUI. How does he plead to the charge? Please go see. All right, Mr. Loveland, if you raise your right hand, you saw me swear firm, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so if you got it. I do. Okay, you can put your hand down. Mr. Loveland, your attorney's entered a plea of guilty to the charge of DUI. Is that with your consent? <laughs> you have to answer out loud so the court reporter can take it down. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Do you understand that by entering this plea of guilty that you're giving up or waiving your constitutional rights? Could you repeat yourself, please? I said, do you understand that by entering this plea of guilty that you're giving up or waiving your constitutional rights? No, this is exactly what I say. I do. <laughs> Let me go over those rights with you. Do you understand that you have, a, you have a right to a trial before a judge or a judge and a jury, and that you also have the right to a presumption of innocence until the state proves your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt? Do you understand those rights? I do. Do you understand that you would have the right to question and cross-examine the state's witnesses at trial, but you'd also have the right to call your own witnesses at trial and have those witnesses subpoenaed by the court? Do you understand those rights? Yes. You understand that you would have the right to remain silent and not have that fact considered by the judge or jury at trial, but you'd also have the right to testify at trial and have your testimony.